<laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I am so thrilled to have today Dr. Alex Ling with me, who has become a dear friend, uh, and he is doing some incredible work putting out an initiative uh, relating to the solar eclipse that's coming up on the 8th of April 2024. Well, we sort of we organized it together, didn't we, Alex? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Amadine. Thank you Hi. for having me. Lovely to have uh, you here. I, I'm very <laughs> excited to share all this information with people because it's incredibly important at this particular moment in the history of humanity, in the in the uh, evolution of humanity. So I am going to give you the floor, Alex, to talk about this wonderful initiative that we have put together called Hum for Humanity. The Hum idea was yours and putting Hum for Humanity, which because Hum is in the word humanity, <laughs> that was my idea. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm really excited. We've got some ex really amazing things coming up with this. And there's a global movement now starting from your incredible initiative with sound. So Please take the floor, Alex, and, and, and share with us all this fascinating information. Yes, yeah, thank you so much, Medine, for this amazing introduction. And yes, you're absolutely right, uh, because it was kind of uh, a shared moment uh, which we had there, and we, we decided to go for for the hum. And, and then, I mean, I, I re researched the hum as a frequency for quite some time, um, but nobody pays really that much attention to the hum. Uh, so most people are more focused on OM and, and other sounds which are related to that. Um, but the hum, which is actually a primordial sound or the primordial sound, um, is probably one of the most important sounds which we carry in our, in our resonance as humans. So, and we have a, an enormous ability to use the hum as as a, a as a collective so between us all uh we can actually connect through a simple sound like that which is a hum and uh, i go into the into the detail a little bit uh, further on but uh, yeah so i came to it purely almost by accident uh when i researched uh, the stones the megalithic sites and i was looking for a sound which would, as we say um, in physics, excite the stones uh, and kind of resonant, resonate with um, the water within, within inside the stone, which is embedded in the crystal, just to explain that very shortly. Uh, so they're tiniest pockets um, within the crystals, mainly granite, sandstone, limestone, the main, the main material which is used to build all the megalithic structures. And uh, these kind of little tiny pockets are filled with water vapor. Um, and if you would open them up, it's so tiny, it would just evaporate. But it still contains the blueprint of life, which is coming from outer space. So that information has been carried from a, a body in our universe, which is called the quasar. So the quasar is an enormous body which uh, just exists um, in the area of a black hole, if that is what you want to call it. And, um, and these uh, bodies have enormous amount of water. I mean, just incredible amounts, 130 trillion times all the oceans combined on Earth, for example, at one of those quasars, you know, so that's quite a lot of water. So, and our ancestors call it the cosmic ocean. And the reason for that is because they knew that the water was coming from space, from the universe. And this kind of blueprint has then, of course, translated into all life forms on this planet, including us. So we all have that in us. Um, and from that point, then we also have the resonance, which comes from space as well, which is um, actually uh, a sound which has been recorded just a year ago and that sound sounds pretty much like a C4 note and the C4 is quite an, an interesting sound it, uh, it resonates actually with our uh, uh, root chakra 
And so uh, it's the color red. So it's a bit of a darker color. I looked up the color of it, which is a bit of a darker red color, the C4 color. It, when you translate it to the frequency of color or to the, it, it yeah, it's a little bit, probably a bit like the darker red in my picture here on the side. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so that's not a coincidence because it does burst us. It kind of connects us with our planet. And uh, it carries also incredible information. So when we hum, then we go into that kind of note of C4, taking account that everybody has is in kind of different harmonics, but we are still, uh, you know, as humans are resonating within C4 notes. So especially when it comes to the hum. It's very close to the middle C, isn't it, C4? Or is it the middle yeah. C? Yes, yes. It's, kind of, it's the middle C to, to the lower C. Yes. So that's where it is. But we did an experiment where we actually went up on a tour in Glastonbury and we had a few people with us. And um, so we all started humming and I didn't actually, we didn't really set a note as such uh, or give a guideline. We just said, well, we just hum. And strangely, um, naturally, we would all go pretty much on the same note, which was just around C, C4. And when we were doing it, we could really feel that the resonance, um, the frequency had a, quite an effect on us. Uh, just we were, we were just five people standing together. But within that field, you could really feel some enormous energies are spreading out uh, uh, fr from us creating that sound. Yes. And that's quite interesting. So, and uh, uh, we have also a different um, uh, uh, get together in, in, in Glastonbury just on the 15th, which is about two days or something. Uh, where are we? Uh, it's a trash, <laughs> three days. Yes. Uh, in three days, I give a very big talk there, about 200 pe people there in, in a town hall in Glastonbury. And uh, so, we're going to do a joint hum. So from 200 Beautiful. people, that's going to be like, wow, it's going to be amazing. Fantastic. And we're going to measure the frequency of that. And we're also going to take some pictures of water, which we're going to place in a bowl kind of in the middle of this group, just, just to see what the water is, how the water is communicating with the sound. Uh, and then we're going to semi-freeze it and going to take some pictures some photographs of it uh so it's going to be all very very interesting a bit like dr emoto basically yes. um yes so we have all these kind of uh things which we're going to do just in preparation for people to get into the into the hum and <laughs> we're, going to, <laughs> we're going to share this out uh as to 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 many networks and individuals as possible and the, really the point here is that we don't have to, we, we all go on the same path, but slightly different ways. And it doesn't really matter what our background is. Everybody can hum. And it's, it's not rocket science. It's just very simple. And while the eclipse is um, happening on the 8th of April, uh, there, are, there is this time of four minutes, 28 seconds, point 0.1, if you want to be accurate, where we um, connect to all sorts of different networks around the world to share this hum and to stimulate people and to, sh uh, to, to ask them to join in and make this sound a worldwide event. Uh, because this sound can really bring change. So, so small it sounds, this hum has a punch. And I think it's time that we are pressing for change and we take all part in this project and to just kind of bring it on basically so we, we need to do this as humans it's time to to um connect to each other it's just how it is yes. and that if that opportunity has been, or has been given naturally by an eclipse and the reason for that is and i go quickly into that to explain why this Ex uh, eclipse you've got so orbs going past you too. Let me tell you okay. the way you've been talking. There's these white orbs that keep flying past <laughs> you up to the side of you. So yeah. I think that's an affirmation right there. 
<laughs> yeah, I, need, I need a bit of uh, support because the last two, <laughs> you know, the last two weeks were so incredibly tense. Um, I had very little sleep over the last, you know, two weeks altogether, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm still kind of uh, uh, Ian, a friend of mine, said you like a machine, you know. So and I said I need to I need to get this done because we have only three more weeks yeah. to basically get it all done. So um, a- I think I think what I really love about this as well is that. Any time that you did a hum, it would be powerful if you unified with a lot of people. But right at the time of the eclipse, it's like there's an energetic um, shield that drops and yeah. it, it sort of allows this point of complete magnification of the energy. So please share with us the importance of all that at that time as well. Yes. Uh, I have to go back just a little bit into ancient times because, you know, there is, for example, Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, which already has been um, uh, kind of talking about it on on the uh, carvings, especially Pillar 43, so where the phoenix or the bird, whichever, however you want to interpret it, um, is holding out a, a, a wing and on its wing is a sphere which most of the people are pretty certain that it's um, a celestial body is the, uh, the sun. So, and there is a lot of uh, indication in history without going into all this detail, but um, two, two time periods have been quite uh, important for Mesopotamia and has brought a lot of changes, which is connected to two solar events, which were eclipses, and they also were connected to a solar maximum. That's what we have right now as well. We are in the middle of the solar maximum, actually coming to the end. Um, and uh, so in this kind of events, something quite incredible happens. So the ionosphere, which is um, changing basically, there's, there's a lot of change in the ionosphere uh, during an eclipse. And that has to do with the electrons and uh, so the shield of the earth is literally coming to a minimum. Uh, so, which means that uh, it also influences, strangely, but very, very fortunate for us, it influences the uh, radiation or the uh, GPS systems and, and the Wi Fi sy- systems and everything which is like uh, uh, created, which is the uh, artificial matrix, let's say. Uh, so, they have been, and I mean when I say they, we all know that we like to call them controllers, whatever you want to call these people who are influencing and directing and controlling us for thousands of years. So they, they have always been using technology um, to, to create this kind of matrix um, to control us. So yeah. that was from times of the pyramids to times of 5G, you know, cell towers today. So it's it's still the same. Yeah. Uh, so while this eclipse is happening, this kind of grid goes down because of the ionosphere being affected. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, we as humans have the enormous, in- incredible opportunity to connect to each other in a most profound way that we are connected to the natural matrix with this earth. So that is one huge window opportunity where we all can resonate with the original frequency. Oh, you described we- that so well. <laughs> Much better than I did. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, that, that's really profound, isn't it? We, we don't yes. want to miss the wave. We don't want to miss this opportunity. This is a gift. Exactly. And, and, you know, so many of us are just itching to go into a better world and this will yeah. really assist that process of being able to get oh. to a better place for humanity. Absolutely. And it empowers us. And that's the thing as well, because we are all sick and tired of being directed. We mm-hmm. all can make our own decision. We know where we want this to go. We don't need greed anymore. We don't need all this kind of control and all this, lies uh, which which has directed our our life you know for such a long time 
uh, lies about history, lies about uh, the timelines we're living in. I mean, it's like an endless, endless kind of, uh, you know, a, 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 a story which they have created to just kind of put us in that specific space where we can be used as slaves, literally. Yeah. So and I think it's time really to break that cycle. You know, this yeah. is now, it's, it's enough. And yes. uh, yeah, we've yes. had <laughs> It's true. Exactly. <laughs> so from that point, also, it has been known for thousands of years, there are texts which um, very strangely has been stolen by the Rockefeller family. Um, and they they know, these kind of people know very well what kind of effects the uh, eclipse has. It goes back to Sumerian times. You know, there are some texts which are around 1000 BC and they talk about this eclipse event and how they uh, put substitute kings and queens in in place um so and the reason for that is because they knew what would happen while the eclipse is occurring and um, what effect it would have on our consciousness as humans that we can connect and then we are like have this you know light bulb moment thinking hang on a minute you know <laughs> i don't have to do this who are you to tell me right and that's what it's all about so, yeah. and they were really, really worried that they would be overruled in that time. So, hence, they put a fake king and queen into place for the duration of the eclipse. Uh, and then when it was safe uh, for them to come out of the woodworks, they kind of, you know, went back onto their throne and killed the others off and said, there you go, you know, I'm safe again. So that that was really what happened. And these kind of texts have been hidden from us for a very long time. Well, that's and a parallel with what's happening now with the royalty. They're all yeah. disappearing stage left yeah. <laughs> and um, all getting, you know, reportedly cancers and this and that and leaving their off the office yeah. and all this. And we haven't seen them for months. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what's happening because they know how important this eclipse is. And they haven't done it in any other eclipses. You know, this is the one which is really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 it just kind of has all the right components for us humanity to kind of make a huge, huge change. And they are aware of it. Do the indigenous people also around the world, are they aware of it obviously as well, aren't they? You've been in touch with them. And yes. they they are preparing for it too, aren't they? And, and they're aware of also what you're doing, a lot of uh, Indigenous uh, people as well, which is incredible. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And uh, it has been, I think this has been known for quite some time. I mean, the um, you know many of the uh, ancient civilizations were quite capable of um, uh, knowing and, and calculating when the next eclipses are happening for decades ahead, you know. And they knew exactly what would happen. So, um, and yes, of course, all the indigenous tribes and all the people who are with this earth and of this earth, they are very much aware that this has to stop and we have to really turn into a different direction. And the only way to, uh, to go forward, and there's no other way, is really united. So we all have to unite as well as all the cosmic alignments that make it extra special, this particular solar eclipse, I think it's also the actual timing of this moment in uh, the evolution of humanity of what's happening on the planet at the moment. You know, there's this great awakening that's palpable, more and more people waking up, there's this consciousness rising, uh, people are realising that the governments are not... <laughs> Are not there to help them and support them, in fact, quite the reverse. And so, you know, I think it's also the alignment of where humanity are for maybe the first time ever on planet Earth, where they have an awareness of what's really been going on and they're doing something about it. Would you say that was an important part of it as well? Oh, absolutely, totally. I mean, uh, not going into details of what happened over the last uh, uh, two or three years. I think we all know what they try to do. But, um, you know, so there's a lot of people who, uh, first of all, of course, were um, very much on board with it. And, uh, you know, kind of we were the evil ones because we, we kind of didn't go along and, you know, not saying more 
but that's how it was. Anyway, so and now people are getting aware that, hang on a minute, there's just something not quite right here. And they see the uh, aftermath, uh, the things are happening in connection it's with the, what happened. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So, and there's more and more, um, you know, mistrust uh, coming, come, uh, uh, growing amongst people. And uh, uh, so, yes, of course, you get always some who will just follow, and that is fine. That's their choice. But there is a lot, a lot of people who are really questioning now. And uh, these people are not necessarily people who have been awake for a long time, but they start to question. And that's the first thing of non-return. So if you ask a question, you that's it. You can never undo that moment. And yes. then you have. Yes. So, and that's what it's all about. It's like setting, putting a seat, you know, around us and, 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 and um, people will see that, oh, wow, you know, there's something happening here. And it's kind of logic as well. It, it's just common sense, really. You know, it's not a conspiracy. It's just common sense. Yes. And I think uh, that that's kind of sinking in now with people. And also questioning, you know, what, what the future is going to hold for the children, um, mm -hmm. which way going so you know and uh, many of the young kids and and teenagers are hugely depressed about their future you know because they just can't see um mm -hmm. what good it holds for them you know so and uh, it's it's kind of everything which which they see if it is like you know all this global warming and all this kind of stuff which is happening you know so which um doesn't give them a good outcome you know but amongst those young people, and that's my, my latest kind of experience, especially from the millennials, uh, which are born like in 2000 and, and after, um, even like kids I've met 10, 11 years old, nine years old, and they're incredibly switched on. And they know, you know, and it's like something happens which has given them that kind of knowledge and, and um, being aware and awake from the moment go you know so we had to really kind of learn it um in our time you know it was kind of uh, not that easily given so we had to go on that path and research everything and be on that path and you know it was was a bit like being in war if you like but uh, <laughs> these these newer generations they seem to have that um incredible knowledge with them and that yes. is that a lot of hope and that's why i thought let's do this hum you know let's just all really pull together and and get out of this deep hole we are in and just get out and get into a really positive future and and i think that's what it's all about we can create it we are all creators and that's oh, the point this is so important to to realize your own potential as a co-creator at the moment and how you have the divine within you and mm -hmm. that divine energy is unlimited. And, you know, the the feeling that people intuitively have that this is a really big event is attested by the fact that when I've contacted some incredible uh, spiritual teachers and people with, um, you know, big communities around the world to tell them about uh, what we're doing, many of them straight away said, yes, they want to be on board. So I've got some incredible people coming on. We're shooting a, um, like a forum, a global forum on the 5th of April, and we're going to share something special, each person for humanity. And we're also going to do a, like a global prayer or intention for the solar eclipse. And so we've got people like an incredible uh, director, in a film director in Australia is coming on who's done some incredible stuff recently, uh, name of Bill Bennett. He's confirmed that he will be there. We have uh, the amazing uh, David Maria, spiritual teacher from Mount Shasta. We have a wonderful man, Jeffrey C. Olson, who uh, had an experience where he had a death experience. He went to the other side, came back, and then he's gone around the world and spoken about it. And he has, you know, number one selling books on uh, Amazon. With that, um, some uh, wonderful, wonderful people will be there, uh, including, of course, yourself, Alex. And 
so this will also be a way to galvanize you know the energy and to support you know what we're doing here with the hum for humanity so that's really exciting and that'll be coming up um on the 5th of april so wow uh, i'd love you to share you you had some important information about saturn so please share with us the significance of Saturn and the rings of Saturn in regard to what's happening with the solar eclipse. Well, it's quite an interesting one because um, if if you look back into, um, I, I, I don't want to talk too much about how successful they were to control us, you know, over <laughs> decades and thousands of years. But um, uh, they, they are very much connected to Saturn energy, of course. Yeah. And uh, one of their driving kind of uh, energy source for, for the whole, um, you know, creation of what they did. So um, it's it's not it's not an ongoing process because there is something called the Song of Saturn, and they have also manipulated the way how they would be reincarnated, and that was quite smart because they would um, in these kind of texts. It would give them a guidance, basically, to um, to learn within a lifetime uh, all about the symbolism and everything which is connected to ancient um, ancient energies, ancient crystals. The, po the point is that you can use the energy which is freely available around us in two ways. You can uh, see it as a neutral energy, or what you can also use it to manipulate. So, uh, can I, can I just they... give you a quick example of this? This is so interesting. Yesterday, this was no less than yesterday, I was at the local beach and there was this huge storm and it was really a phenomenal storm. Like the, the waves were massive and the wind was howling and it was pouring with rain and it was full on. And I said, right, I'm a co-creator. I'm going to do something about this. <laughs> there wasn't hardly anyone else there. And I, I went in and I uh, went in on the inner and I asked, for the, the Mother Earth to calm the storm. I talked to the um, the divas of the wind because the wind was just full on. It was nearly blowing me over. And I kid you not, within two minutes, it started to calm down. And then as we walked towards the car, it was peaceful. And that would, I, I am sure, and I know it's, it's full on, and I'm not saying that it's just me. I think anyone has the ability to do this. But I think as a co-creator, I stopped that storm in that particular area or calmed it down. And when we got to the cut, it was nearly fine. The wind had calmed right down. And that's a co-creational experience right there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the point, you know. We all can really be creators, and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. So, and and we have to be, you know, aware that we can create good things and we can create bad things. So that's why it's so important to have a, a positive mind, you know, and uh, that we are connected to universal love and to the right frequencies, and that really is so important. Um, and that's why all these kind of imagery, which has been put on us from the medias and everything it's just so negative and it's so soul destroying as well so uh, we don't have a, a tv anyway but uh you know it's it's quite incredible how it impacts on people yeah. um yes it's so, for the kids too i feel bad for the children that have to you know uh, yeah. have that in their faces but anyway Ooh. yes yes and i always i feel sad when and young families, you know, you see them. And uh, I, I was, I always visit the uh, the ancient sites, you know, so around here. And, and uh, last summer we saw this young family and um, the, so the parents went out to go to the stone circle. That was great. But the kids stayed in the car and they were just, you know, on their tablets and just kind of playing games. And they didn't even pay any attention where they were, you know, and I thought that is, that is not good, you know, because you you totally detach yourself from everything around you, you know, so including people. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I think we really have allowed this whole AI technology to take over, you know, in certain ways. So, and that's also something which we need to either learn to use it for very positive uh, ways, or we need to just step back, you know, whichever way you want to look at it. 
but it shouldn't be used to control us. And that's the thing, you know? Mm. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, coming back to Saturn quickly. Um, yeah, in March, the rings of Saturn will disappear for a little while. And it's just like an optical illusion in, in that way. But in, in these kind of rings, uh, it, it has, uh, again, a different uh, a symbolism. So, and which is interpreted uh, as, as a loss of power. So very similar to the eclipse, where we have the window of opportunity to connect to, to each other. That is also the moment when they really lose all, all their powers, which they have, you know, in, in magic. So, and that exactly almost one year, you know, and, and that is interesting in itself because the energy of the solar eclipse will be in our Earth's frequency for almost a whole year. So it's not just for the eight hours, you know, which is quite an intensified version of it, but the blueprint will resonate within our Earth until that moment. That's quite interesting. So it's almost like a closure. Mm -hmm. And that I find very interesting. So yeah. um, I'm very much... I'm very, very positive that we can make a huge change and that we can first, probably for the first time in history of humanity, go into the right direction as, as humans together. So, yeah, and, and that is, yes, yes. We, we need to do this. And, and that's our time now, for sure. Yes. Yeah. I think there's nothing like sound uh, when many people use their voice and express sound to raise the frequency, you know, when they use the right sound. And it's the quickest road. You know, the music they call the royal road to the divine. And similarly, sound is the royal road to the divine. So it's us connecting to our divine, our divinity, and then raising the frequency instantaneously then that will be accelerated and magnified by the solar eclipse. So this is brilliant news. Everyone who's watching, please share this video. We want as many people as possible on board. And also you could even start practicing your humming in the key of C4 now. There's a YouTube uh, sine wave that I'm going to share below in the link that is a C4 one that you can practice with or you might, you know, find your own way to, to get that note of C4. But even start practicing now and tell all your friends, tell all your family and be aware, you know, when the actual solar eclipse happens. It's going to be visible, so there'll be a complete blackout over Mexico, US and Canada uh, on the 8th of April for about, I think it's going to be about five minutes, isn't it? And also uh, this will affect literally 30 million people. Mm. Yes, it's it's quite an important uh, point also to make that the uh, eclipse, um, the longest duration, which is 4 minute 28.1 seconds exactly, uh, the longest duration is within a zone in Mexico, which is called uh, the zone of silence. Um, a very, very interesting area. Um, a lot of conspiracies about UFO sightings uh, to um, a possible arc underneath uh, the ground of the desert uh, to some, um, you know, underground station. There's all sorts. There's some beautiful stories about some Pleiades which appear sometimes. And some of the people who work in the uh, biosphere uh, laboratory uh, because of the electromagnetic field which is there quite an unusual one very very active uh, your compass keeps spinning in the area but also it affects the plants and the animals so the plants are extraordinary kind of large and uh, so yes and uh, uh, there's a lot of incredible stories there and within that zone that's where the duration, the longest duration of the eclipse just happened to, to occur. Not a coincidence. Definitely, definitely not. So, yeah, watch that space. It's going to be amazing. And you'll be uh, there at that time. That's amazing. Um, right. It is literally the biggest cosmic event of our times. That's a quote from you, direct from you. And so... This hopefully will go out and resonate on a deep level with everyone listening that this is a moment that 
we need to harness at this time. There's also a lot in the Bible, biblical prophecy regarding this particular solar eclipse. I'm going to leave the information below for people to read. I won't go into that now, but I'll leave the information on that below. And is there any final words? Oh, we have a website, don't we, for the HUM project that will be going up in a few days' time. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, the, the website will be open for, for people to, to go and visit uh, just in a few days' time. And I think it's going to be a good good point for people to uh, to join, to talk to each other. There's going to be links to all sorts of different uh, scenarios. Um, there's also a link to Akron. Which I'm going to talk, talk about that as well. I'm just coming to that. <laughs> I want to leave that best to last. But but the the thing with hum is it's also an an anagra an is an acronym for um, humanity unite united movement. Is that correct? Humanity united movement. Humanity united movement. Yes, yeah. So yes. that's that's yes. the, the short uh, or the explanation of hum. Uh, Tell us about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Uh, that's our. Uh, that's the a kind of a, a, a creation which we did in in honor of the uh, eclipse. So for people who know Aquan, uh, they know that it's a structured water which has been infused with um, water soluble frankincense, myrrh, and gold. Um, so which uh, has been. Um, shared around the world you know amongst so many people and uh, so many people had extraordinary um, experiences with it especially on the spiritual level so for the eclipse we thought that we would do a special edition which is going to be very inexpensive because for us it's more important that it goes out there and will be shared just before the moment it's so not a I'm profit making thing it's more of a no energetic thing to help with, with the energy of what's happening yeah absolutely it comes in little 40 ml bottles in that little uh quite flat bottle so you can put it in your pocket or you can take it in your in your bag or whatever so it's 40 ml, uh, ml bottles are quite small but enough to share even with people who you hum together with and the idea is to have just, um, we did a lot of experiments, so we'll be taking the water beforehand to uh, basically tune our frequencies into the frequency of water. And that bottle of water also contains a C4 frequency. And that's why we needed to get it out there. Uh, we found a way to, um, to, to hold the frequency within the water. Also, it's, it's been charged uh, with, with magnets and we it structured it. And it's almost, it's a little bit thicker than water. So, because it's almost like the water plasma. I've been asked so many, so many times by people who do not understand how we can create the plasma without it being collapsing, but we just found the perfect way. So, and, uh, uh, when we did it, we, we just kind of uh, yeah couldn't believe what kind of effect it had on a, on a spiritual level on our consciousness. However, so that is going to be um, being shared out. We we do have a limited amount uh, amount of, of of bottles only available. Um, so, but we try to to get as as many out there as possible. So that's I what I'm saying. Save mine. It's on the way. Yeah. I haven't got it yet, but it's on the way. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's being um, produced at, as we speak. So I think in 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 the in the room where we produce it, uh, our building, and uh, we've been just infusing the frequencies. I've actually created it over the last full moon because I wanted to harvest the, fru the full moon frequency. Uh, to get as much energy into it as possible. So, yes, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful uh, product to, to just have just before the eclipse. That's really wonderful. Thank you for your service. You you, you must have been working like a madman to get that out. That's brilliant. Well, <laughs> well um, as we know, Aquan is an incredible, incredible uh, it, it's really a, a tool for humanity to help in the whole ascension process. So if anyone hasn't 
got there, Aquan. I'm leaving a link below. I am an affiliate in Australia because it is incredible. And I really encourage people to uh, take this in their process of their soul journey at the moment uh, because we all want to be at um, optimal uh, frequency as we go through this process. So just to finish, uh, it's been so wonderful to chat with you, Alex. You do such incredible work and you're such a kind and humble person and, and it's an honour to, you know, be a friend of yours. So <laughs> so thank you so much for everything that you do. And I have a, a promotional a short video and interestingly I noticed, which is my favourite number, and anyone that watches my videos, I talk about this all the time, 222, that's my number. <laughs> and the video is 222 long, 2 minutes and 22 seconds. And uh, this explains a little bit more about uh, what we were talking about today. Is there anything you want to say about that video before I show it, Alex? Yeah, talking about 222, that was really not an intention uh, <laughs> you know, in, in that way, but it was obviously meant to happen. So when, when I just stopped at the last second, I then spotted actually it was two minutes, 22 seconds long. And I thought, wow, that's quite incredible. So oh. yeah, that, that video is just kind of um, giving you a little bit of guidance what is going to happen and how important it is really to tune in to the frequency of the uh, eclipse. Fantastic. Well, I'll play that video now and I look forward to chatting to you again soon, Alex, and also, of course, seeing you on the 5th of April for our Solar Eclipse Forum, which is going to be really, really special. And you'll be sharing something else special for humanity. I'm excited to see what that will be <laughs> because you have so much knowledge and um, look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you for having me, Medine. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
so many people hope that there is a change coming as well. So yeah. and I think it's really, really needed. And on a conscious level, globally, together with the Earth, I think uh, it will resonate with our planet, with our Mother Earth in a specific way. And it feels just like, you know, um, that we can emotionally, it's very emotional, actually, you know, so when we did the hum, many of us started to cry after it was, uh, oh. you know, kind of a moment where uh, it was a very happy, happy moment, yes. but it was very emotional as well. And someone actually said, who was taking part in one of the hums we did together with people, um, he said, you know, it felt like my mom was holding me when I was a baby and she was humming to me, you know, yeah. so there was kind of comfort in it. And, uh, and I think that that's kind of resonating with us on a very deep level. So from our heart, you know, uh, I think that's why it's so important. Yeah. Do yes. you know the word yum is the heart, the sound of the heart chakra, yum. That's why when you eat food and you go yum. Yeah. That's the oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, which is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. another thing too with bees, you know, they hum. And if you stand under bees when they're humming, it apparently it does something really powerful to your energy and it balances your yeah. chakras and it does all this incredible stuff. I have a, a meme somewhere about that. I'll have to try and find it. But uh, the bee humming is really, really wonderful for your energy. And that's a very similar concept, isn't it? Oh yeah, totally. Or cats, uh, you know, Very. cats. When... Oh, That's I've got right. a meme on that too. <laughs> yeah. I'll add my meme on that one as well. <laughs> yeah, but these, these are all this kind of the same kind of frequencies we're talking yes. about. You know, yes. they're all coming from the C four region. And, uh, and and the bees, yes, of course, in Turkey, they have this whole culture being dedicated to bees, mm -hmm. you know, the bee housing and all this kind of thing, you know, and it's a really, really important thing. But this this event from from the uh, from from Saturn is quite an incredible thing which happens. It happens every 13 years or so. But it coincides again with the energy of the eclipse. And that's why it's different. And I think I think that there are a lot of leaders, and um, you know, especially <laughs> as we can see with the whole with the royals around the world, you know. So there really, really is something happening here, and and you know, obviously people are um, catching up with it, and it raises a lot of question marks. You know, what's really going on? So from from a historical point or from the ancient text, we know what's going on, and and that is the reason. So, you know, they are, they are still uh, acting within the same, um, you know, within the same kind of reigns as, as the Sumerian king, kings, you know, so it's mm. no different. Yes. So it's, yes. Still, it's, the same, it's the same bloodline, right? So mm. it's still happening. Absolutely. Yes. But, uh, I've got yeah. to say just quickly, just a couple of quick things before you go. Uh, there's quite a few people predicting um, that there's on March 15th, there could be a big... like a big earthquake in California or some huge thing because, they, you know, the currency is about to shift and whenever that's about to happen, the dark just try and cause an event mm. to create, you know, to, to try and harness the energy back for themselves. So that that would be interesting. If that happened before, it would be even more important, you know, to do the humming for humanity and do this eclipse event too um, if that Definitely. actually was the case and uh, even even um you know cliff high has um algorithms where he said this event's coming up around that time yeah. or something so yes. yeah yeah and it's interesting because that is the day when i have to talk in glastonbury where we have 200 people humming so oh. that's gonna be, yeah i know okay. so that's going to be quite an interesting uh thing you know so yes. what what happen so but i think also that this planet has to liberate itself from all these um artificial you know frequencies and i was just uh, preparing for my talk on on the 15th and part of it is how 
uh, the resonance and frequencies and the sound pollution, especially on our planet, has an uh, enormous uh, effect on wildlife, especially whales in the ocean or the ships. You know, I mean, at, at any given time, we mm. have over 100,000 ships on our oceans, you know, and we're talking big container ships and cargo yes. ships. You know? yes. And that sound has driven the whales to change their song. I mean, that is quite incredible um, because uh, they are disorientated and they yes. cannot communicate with each other because of that sound. So it takes it takes about two hours after a ship, one ship, has passed so that's the time when the whale is silent you know and and after that it starts to sing again but only for a very short period because another ship is going to be on the way right so because oh, it's so that's many. sad i love whales I love people, you know and that's why so many whales are also beaching you oh. know on on land and and because they just don't know where to go so oh. and Again, you know, these kind of things as humans, we really need to change this. You know, it's, it's just what we do to water is terrible, oh. you know, and, and I know this is like, I don't want to put out negativity as such, but we need to be aware of it. We need to be aware that these things are happening and happened for the last, you know, 200 years. Uh, that we are polluting, polluting this planet in such a profound way, and especially the water. I'm not talking about plastics mm. and, and pollution of the oceans. That's definitely something which uh, needs to be taken care of. Um, but yeah, I was I was in Turkey once, you know, uh, a different time than I went to Turkey a couple of times. And I went to an area called Bursa, Bursa is um, a beautiful mountain area outside, not far away from, from Istanbul. And uh, it's the most amazing landscape and it's known for their bees and the honey um, and the chestnut trees because there's so many chestnut trees there. And of course in Turkey, uh, you get all year round, you know, roasted chestnuts and, and honey from Bursa, which is world famous. It's the best honey I ever tasted. Um, but I was up on the mountain plateau and, um, you know, Borsa is not like a big city. It's a town, you know, um, don't know how many people live there, uh, but, you know, kind of a middle-sized town. Um, and I stood on the plateau and I kind of was leaning over the edge. You could hear from the town, the vibration, the sound vibration traveling up into the mountains and it was deafening. It was such wow. out. Yeah. It was such a loud hum, and that's when it occurred to me. That was actually one of the first moments where I thought about the frequencies and how it affects us as humans. And you know, that was in two thousand and four. Um, so, and and that humming sound, which was obviously an artificial hum, um, was really quite incredible. And I thought, wow, that's just one town. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. How it would sound like yes. if all our cities, you know, together? Yes. That must be deafening, you know. Yes, yes, so yes. that that resonates with our earth, of course, you know. Mm. It, it would be incredible to just, you know, for I know it's kind of not possible in a way, but it would be amazing if all the sounds which being created by machines and cars and you know. Or all, all, all this these factories and whatever. It would be so great to just have that silence back. Yes. The original kind of, you know, the quiet, the quietness. We could see that partially in um when we had the uh the the you know pandemic thing. <laughs> and uh, uh we had deer on the roads here, which we never seen on the road, mm -hmm. and it was so quiet and so peaceful. That was the only positive thing for me. It was like, it yeah. was so quiet. It was good for the wildlife. Yeah, some of the wildlife around the world regenerated absolutely around that time. It was very interesting. That's right. And yeah. uh, can I tell you a really strange thing before we go? And maybe you can look into this or talk to someone about this. We have these horrible things that were brought into 
uh, called cane toads. They're toxic and they're big and they're ugly. And they were brought in to eradicate um, some sort of bug or something and they just took over, particularly the north, and they're working their way down. Anyway, we, they're everywhere in Queensland. And um, my partner was out there and twice recently he went to uh, whack whack them because we don't want our dog to eat them because they're really toxic, to whack, yeah. to, whack, to whack them. And he went to do it and, and they just disappeared like they were interdimensional. Isn't that weird? 